actually there was another meeting that was happening in which I had just for safety I muted any noise level. okay anyways so then let me just say it from the beginning okay so today we are going to see the combinatorial side of existence of monotonic sequences okay so today's class will be very combinatorial okay so this is not this is really not analysis okay but what we have already seen okay what we have um already seen is that so if you have an infinite sequence okay if you take an infinite sequence which kind of um, is an example of take a chaotic system okay any infinite sequence then you will find an infinite monotonic sequence in it meaning that which will be either increasing or decreasing okay so if x1 x2 x3 dot 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 is is an infinite sequence and this can be a sequence of real numbers it could be a sequence of integers it could be a sequence of anything okay as long as there is some notion of big and small in that sequence <clears throat> among the numbers that feature in the sequence is an infinite sequence then there is a there is then we put it like this there is either an infinite increasing by increasing i mean non decreasing okay or you can assume all the terms are distinct and just say increasing infinite increasing subsequence okay so i suppose all of you know what subsequence is by now okay yeah just a part of the sequence in which the order of the terms does not the relative order does not change so we move from left to right and we pick up some terms along the way and for infinite means you have to keep picking up infinite many and it will be increasing subsequence or a decreasing one okay so this is something that you have already seen now infinitely increasing subsequence formally it would mean though it's not important uh, i mean formally in, in writing what a subsequence looks like is not important was not important for proving it too much and is not important and it will be important later on when we do epsilon delta arguments and so on but right now it is not but still an infinite an infinite subsequence would be like this but at the same time increasing means that it will be a well, just put like this and that doesn't stop and here remember the most important thing is that i1 is less than i2 is less than i3 and so on. okay meaning that you move from left to right in the sequence and you pick up some of the terms and you keep doing this okay so this is the theorem that we already proved okay if you don't if you don't remember the proof or you're not confident about it go back and have a look at it okay the proof uh, the idea of the proof is important okay so if some if if uh, if i ask some if i ask can you summarize the idea of the proof so i do not want the proof so this is a very in, important um, it, uh, i would say important art you know to be able to uh, summarize something you know in your own words without actually you know uh, saying the whole details so that's what i'm asking for can you summarize the idea of the proof or just the idea of this theorem summarize the idea of the proof or nature of the theorem both are basically similar <clears throat> yeah so take take a minute think about this no this is this is a part of the bolzano weierstrass theorem yeah but but what is the idea what is the idea of a statement like this so this is a completely non analysis question okay it has nothing to do with analysis or anything like that yes yes right that is the okay that is that is okay that is in some sense the idea but 
that is not the idea right that is a way to maybe remember the proof or something that is a that, is, that that's a trick part but what is the idea of the but you're right it's in some sense in some sense if you if i want to if i will extrapolate on what you have said about peaks it is basically correct yeah that you you know you keep you keep finding increasing subsequences as long as you can and when you cannot you stop right so means there's nothing bigger than this circle term to the right right and then so you start the same thing again and then you can't go on forever if you can go on forever then very good then you found an increasing subsequence if you cannot then you stop and these are the peaks and these peaks will be going down those are some details which you can fill but in any case if you want the details you should go back and look but this is this is in some sense the summary of the proof but the summary of the idea okay the idea basically of this kind of statement is that you cannot find chaos in something and also in its complement right because that is when that is basically that is contradicting to the definition of chaos right if you think about it right if you try to so let's put it in this this terms of increasing and decreasing if you try to avoid an increasing subsequence if you try to avoid an infinite increasing subsequence then you know there has to be an opposing force and that is the decreasingness from time to time it has to come in right and it has to keep coming in okay and so that gives you a decreasing one so if you try to avoid an increasing one you get a decreasing one and that was basically the idea of the proof right that you you try to I try to uh, you, you assume that there is no increase in subsequence and then so you have to stop and then when you start again you have to stop again and this you know this decreasing is stopping it but then that's giving order in the complement of the system okay so this is this is a order in chaos type of statement and this kind of statement is found throughout mathematics okay uh, from graph theory to number theory okay but so it's so basically uh there are two opposing and today today i will introduce a mathematical language which should make this precise so this is not just some you know just words so this is, i will i make this precise today through the notion of i'll motivate it but the word is partial orders okay and that's that's partly important in analysis but it's very important it's essential in uh, the discrete maths and but you never know where you come but in any case Two, two, two opposing forces. That is basically what it is, right? So if you try to so avoiding avoiding increasingness or minimizing the length of increasing subsequences, that's what we will come to first. The the combinatorial side. So avoiding increasingness gives um, decreasingness. So it is. It is something like the volume is fixed, or the area is fixed, and if you decrease the length, then the breadth has to increase. Okay, and this is what I will make precise through a language. So we will introduce a language which will make that precise. So the idea is there, but introducing the language is really the art, which of course is not my in 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 any way, but it is a well established theory. But I'll do a part of it, and that the ideas of that are very important in discrete maths. We'll solve some uh, discrete maths problems through that. So in any case, this was the thing. But okay. So, any, any questions so far? All right. So now let's let's come to the actual question that we were looking at last time. Yeah, I suppose some some of you may have solved it, and so you can present it, and, uh, and then we can move forward in that. This is already proved. Okay. Next is the. i would not say combinatorial version of this question or this problem but a quantitative so this is a rather qualitative statement okay it is a qualitative statement right but what we are interested in is a quantitative version this is a question that combinatorial people optimization people would ask right what is the con uh, what can be the quantitative version of the above can anybody i mean i i had already said this last time but can anybody uh, mention it what would be uh, roughly what would it look like uh, what kind of question would you ask 
if I asked you, okay, just formulate a quantitative version of this. You see, this is a qualitative version because this is just saying that if you have an infinitely long sequence, then you will have an infinitely long increasing subsequence, or if you avoid that, then you'll end up with an infinitely long decreasing subsequence. Right? It's just infinitely long. We are not asking how fast you will find it, what these I1, I2, I3 is, you know, uh, how, how many terms do you have to go so that you can find the 10th I10 and so on. We're not asking all that qualitative question. We're just happy with the quantitative with, with, with the qualitative version. The more numerical version of this question would be that like this. That, okay, this is infinite. But suppose so you get an infinite increase in subsequence. Okay, but suppose this is how we, we can formulate it, right? So if I if I if I want an increasing or because you can't you know you cannot get you i mean you can never force an increasing subsequence right um, you may not have it just take a degree in sequence so the quantity version is that if i want an increasing subsequence if i want an increasing or a decreasing subsequence of <clears throat> length 100 now i don't want in, i don't want infinite okay i want a specific thing of length 100 then how long a sequence should i take then how long should my sequence be to guarantee to guarantee this. So let me just say this again. So basically, you want a length such that if you take that big a sequence, then no matter what sequence you take of that length, this is this. Okay. There is some length. Is there? We, we don't even know that first. Okay. Is there some length such so that if I take that big, suppose 1 million, okay, 1 million length sequence, then can I then will that guarantee that I have uh, increasing or decreasing subsequence of length 100? How long a sequence should I take? Okay. Does everybody understand the question? Okay. How big my sequence should be? I'll also write this in a more straightforward way. But this is the kind of, this is the way it's kind of, when you're doing maths, this is the way you ask and you move forward. If you're reading, if you're reading it, that's a different thing. But yeah. Okay, and this, this, by the way, we had not proved, but we had seen at length uh, through other measures and so on, I means smaller number and so on. We had seen that 99 square plus one is so we are taking smaller cases and got here kind of 99 square plus one terms yep. so now what will the statement be the statement is that any sequence of length 99 square plus one will have a monotonic subsequence of length 99 plus one okay so here is the more traditional way of writing it any sequence of length setting it in general of length n square plus one has a sub has a monotonic subsequence okay has a monotonic subsequence of length so this is obviously at least, or it doesn't matter. I mean, if there's a bigger, then there's a smaller also. So <clears throat> of length 
100 or n plus 1. Yeah, this is the way in which this theorem is usually stated, but this is, I don't think this is the way you discover it. Yeah, well, it, it, it really depends. It depends on the level of insight you're coming from and so on. Yeah, like we don't even know if this, if, <laughs> if this is true and um, yeah. But again, the idea is similar. I mean, if you want to avoid any, getting an increasing subsequence of length more than n plus one, then you kind of, no, or rather stop again, stop again, then you'll get this decreasingness. And, and so if a sequence is long enough, you will get a either increasing or decreasing. If you avoid increasing, then you'll get decreasing. But that's no by no means a proof. We have to do a proof because now things are very specific. It's unlike, so it's a, in some sense, it's a harder theorem. Well, in some sense it is, some sense not. Some people are more troubled by infinity. So then I don't know, but yeah, but it's a different. Okay. so. Is this, is the last statement clear? Okay. Because the proof of the, because the statement has many applications. Okay. Especially when, I, when we say it in the language of partial orders and also it's one of the many order in chaos type theorems. And also the proof idea is used in many places. So please understand the statement first. Okay. And also how it comes from this, this theorem uh, in not, sorry, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm saying, you know, how it comes from asking the quantitative version of the first one. Okay. So obviously I will not directly jump to the proof. Okay. Okay. Let me ask a question. Okay, so if we assume, so let's call this star. Okay. And let's call this one. Okay. Does so, so I, I've been saying that star is a rather harder statement, it's a more quantitative space statement, apparently. But how how correct is this thing? So the so if I have to if you have to really test if it's correct, this is a question that you've asked. Does star imply one? Meaning that, so for a second, assume that this is true. Assume that, okay, this is true. If I take a sequence of length n square plus one, and this statement is no more very surprising because we have proved something similar already and the idea is also that we have actually proved something similar for the infinite version. But now my question is, if I take a sequence of length n square plus one, does it guarantee, okay, sorry, let me repeat. If I take a sequence of length n square plus one, okay, then it does have a monotonic subsequence of length n plus one. Let's assume this for a second. Let's just, we have not proved it, let's, but let's assume it for a second. Then my question is, can you use it to prove number one? That is, if you assume this, then that does number one become trivial that any infinite sequence should have an infinite monotonic subsequence. Let's, let's think about this. These are maybe the small, small steps leading to a, so you get intuition about these things more. And next I will go to more concrete stuff like counter examples and examples, and then we will go to the proof. Okay, so it's a little slow and apologies, this is not an analysis class in some sense, I just, but from next week we'll be doing analysis in this. In the sense that, yeah, sequences. What do you think? Do you think that you can use star because it's for any n, any sequence of length n square plus one and any n, it does have a monotonic sequence of length n plus one. Can you use it to prove number one? Yes, number one is here. Number one is, ah, number one is the number one theorem. Yeah, so this is number one. And this is any n in naturals.
okay but 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 will you be able to no but what n if you want to break the infinite one or two but then okay yeah but the problem is that if you break it into two well you cannot break it into two finite so you have to be more clear first what do others think you think it it can it will be true or do you think it will not do you think so it, so let me tell you it can be both ways i'm not trying to suggest that uh, it is true okay i'm not trying to suggest that it is true others have no op just, just just see your opinion see because see when you say something and you make a mistake that's where the real learning sticks just think once and just say it doesn't have to be correct obviously yeah you see Ah, uh, okay. So you have got it. So you're kind of saying that it is not does not follow. You're kind. You're thinking it doesn't follow, right? Yes. Okay. So is everybody kind of getting that? You see, this isn't. So this statement is pretty clear. We have we have seen this. Okay. This one is again just means that if you take a long sequence n square plus one length, then you will have in that you will find, and you just just see if you just take many many dots. Yeah. It's kind of Uh, making sense that you will find something either an increasing or decreasing some pattern that's the statement it is but the problem is so see you cannot say that so yeah so first of all the thing is, is no okay but i mean I, i'm saying this because i had made i made this mistake many times okay but yeah i mean i i was much worse in my high school no the point point is that no it's no because because see this is saying that it's true for any n now you cannot say that because it's true for any n you can take n equal to larger and larger n okay see this sequence this infinite sequence yeah infinite sequence so in this infinite sequence so let me so if you're going to use star if you're going to use star okay so let's take a color so use star for let's say n equal to just just for the effect okay nothing if you star for n equal to this okay in the infinite sequence okay now you see this is an infinite sequence so obviously it has this many terms so let me not write it like this let me say this is 10 to the power okay let's say this many terms used for this okay using star for this n square plus 1 i could have said n equal to 10 to the power 5 if you use this, if you use star theorem this this theorem using this okay which is a finite version what do you get you get that if you use it for this n square plus 1 this is the n then so you can use this first of all you can use this in, in the infinite sequence because if it's an infinite sequence it has this many terms it has more i mean it has more than this many terms is that right is that correct obviously yeah it has more than this many terms so it has so you look at the first this many terms if you look at the first this many terms then in that you can find a monotonic subsequence 
of length 10 to the power 5 plus 1. So I found a big monotonic subsequence. Yeah. Now you can take bigger and bigger n. And all that will fit in the infinite sequence because it's infinite. Okay. So you can take bigger and bigger n. And you'll get bigger and bigger monotonic subsequences, but you cannot guarantee an infinite monotonic subsequence. Or can you? Yeah, it doesn't seem like, right? So it does not seem like you can guarantee an infinite monotonic subsequence just from here. So no, it is not true. Infinity is a different cardinality, okay? Infinity is a different cardinality. But in fact, these two theorems can be stated under the same language using something called cardinal arithmetic, but we will not mention that right now. Yeah. One is already proved. <laughs> one is already proved. It's part of the, as you have mentioned, Bolzano vs. Trust. But yeah, one is one is obviously true. And it's remarkable. Yeah, one is true. So this means that this statement is true. So I mean, you can put both of them under the following statement. You can say for any n union infinity. So you can also take n equal to infinity. And infinity square plus one is also infinity. But that's doesn't probably doesn't make sense, right? Yeah, but it is a certain kind of infinity that n is. N is a certain, but I'm not going to that. Okay. This is, in fact, I believe should be true for any cardinality, so to say, but that is beyond the scope now. Okay. Anyways, now let us forget about one completely. Now we don't need it too much. So let's remove. Right. Right. So now let's try to. Okay. So I had asked an exercise last time. And that exercise basically was saying that this is this theorem is the best you can get. In general, this is the best you can get. You cannot get better than this. Let, let me, yeah, no, forget about it. So what I'm saying is for n plus one, n square plus one is the least, hence the best. What do I mean? I mean that obviously if you say, and for n plus one, you say, you take a sequence of n factorial plus one. Obviously it will still be true. Is that right? If you take a sequence of n factorial plus one, then obviously it will again have an n plus one monotonic sequence if this theorem is true. Okay. But what I'm saying is that, and remember, the main thing about this theorem is any sequence, any, this any is absolutely, absolutely important here. And this is what these theorems are so general, so simple to state, not very simple, not very, but not very difficult to prove us though, no? but so simple to state and so general. That's why we study them. That's why that's what mathematics is about, right? Saying some general truths, which can be applied to a large number of places. And that's the thing. It is so simple. Yeah? You're just picking up a sequence. Okay, that's why it's something very fundamental to the nature of things. Okay. So, yes, I, I don't know how, how that is happening. So, I mean, it's, it seems like, I mean, this is a statement about order in chaos, right? I, I, this is such a fundamental result because you take any sequence and this happens. And then you take any graph and then there also you get a monochromatic something. So this kind of statement always is true. Now, I don't know if truth, if we have kind of, if the notion of truth have has evolved so that this kind of statement is, so this is probably some nonsense, but just what I feel, and I do not know, but because, but my, my what I'm trying to say is that this kind of statement is all always true. And this kind of statement somehow makes us feel good. I don't know if at least me and I think many people also whom I have talked with, this kind of statement somehow feels very good, right? Point is, is order in chaos. Now, and this kind of statement seems to hold in very generality, very generality. Yeah? This is just, just any sequence. Sequence is such a, such a, sequence is just a list. A sequence is not some pattern. No, sequence is just a list. Any list to create. 
So point is order and chaos seems to hold in so many places. Okay, seems to be true. So this seems to be true. Okay. Now I I believe it's actually the other way around. I believe that the notion of truth has evolved in a way so that this statement is true. Because see the notion of truth for us humans, right? It I think it has evolved in in this way that these kind of statements are true. Because these kind of statements are more fundamental than truth. We kind of we kind of make the nature of truth so that this kind of statement holds. Because if you think about it, this is what you know evolutionary speaking striving for. Hey, you know, one can argue we want to be on the border of order and chaos, but yeah, I think it has evolved in a way so that this happens. I think one can say more rigorously using evolutionary biology and so on, but but this is true. Like something more concrete can be said about vision. Why is this three-dimensional world is not three-dimensional because three dimensions are enough for us to survive, so it evolves like that. In any case, let's not get more into that. That is probably not nonsense. Uh, the point is. Yeah, if if we, but you guys you guys can think about these things. You should have more ideas. Yeah. So my point is that n square plus one is the least here. So coming to this, our small world. Okay, n square plus one is the least. Okay. So what what do I mean by this? I'm saying that uh, give an example. Um. Yeah, give an example of a sequence of length n square, okay, uh, which has no. So let's think about this, which has, um, yeah, which has no uh, monotonic. Subsequence of length n plus one. So I'm saying that for n square, this result does not hold. Huh. Having n length peaks n times. Yes. Yeah, it is something like that. I will I will say that that will be correct. But but can you make it more? Can you give a more precise example because that is still vague. Yeah, so that's a very that's a very interesting thing you point out, right? That can actually make you guess the sense. I think that we already did, right? That you have to take this peaks 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 of n n n and so n square. If you take then, but if you take n square plus one, then you will. But then still, can you? Can anyone give a actually give an example? Yes, yeah, so I think we can just pursue the idea of this peaks, right? So, so you take a sequence like this. So you have first term, second term, third term, and so on. Let's try this. You you take this sequence so that you take n terms. Obviously, you don't take n plus one terms. Take n terms. Okay, take n terms. And yeah, I think it's very very obvious. Yeah, or let's check if there is some small details living. Then, then in the next lot of n terms, so these these are n terms, okay? These are n terms. So this is this is x one, x two. Maybe I can write. And the height is just the height is just the value, okay? Uh, let me let's be more clear. So this is the height, and this is the x-axis. Okay, so this is the value. And this is like one, two, three. So the height is the x one, x two, and so on. Right? This is x three, x four, and so on. So you go till x n, 
and then you do it again. But what exactly do you do? I cannot take equality. I cannot take equal. Okay, so I'll just take something in the middle. Yeah, something in the middle of the first and the second, right? And then the n plus one -th term, I can take something in the middle. And then between these two, I can take between this, between this and this. Okay, height. I will take the n plus fourth term. And in this way. Um, no, this does not. Can anybody see a problem in this? There's some problem here, right? Yeah, there is a problem. I should start with taking it. So I should take x n plus one. So here is my n plus one. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, I know I can take that. That's right. That's right. But I'm not looking for exact example, but this is what it is. Um, my, my point is that x n plus one should be less than x one. Okay, otherwise I'll end up getting an increasing subsequence maybe. Okay, so yeah, you take you take like this, you take xn, xn plus one less than x1. So you take it below this, you take here. And then yeah, then you take below x2, the next term. Yeah, so xn plus two is less than x2 and bigger than x1. So it is like this, okay, so you can understand what's happening. If anyone is not understanding, you can say, so this between, it is yeah it is it is a bit like this yeah right so you see it's this okay. is everybody clear is it clear to everyone so this is the x2n term and what is happening yeah so i first taking just an increasing sequence x1 x2 the x, xn and you can put any real numbers on them any real numbers implicit them then but for xn xn plus 1 i have to be careful right i have to take xn plus 1 to be less than x1 xn plus 2 to be less than x2 and similarly i have to take x2n to be less than xn okay otherwise you see otherwise if i take x2n to be bigger then i will then this and this together will form an increasing subsequence I do not want that. Okay. And then you can continue like this. Okay. Just continue in the sense that you take this 2n plus 1, and here you take it even below this. Okay. Just, just continue as it was for the first group and second group, relative second and third group will be similar. Okay. So you take x2 uh, n plus 1 to be less. This is important then xn plus one and so on. You just continue and then you see you will not get any increasing. So you will get increasing subsequences of length n. You will also get decreasing subsequences of length n, but nothing of length n plus one. Nothing of length n plus one. Okay, please. Uh, if, no, because I cannot really say work, work out the details. There is no details here almost. Okay, but take a minute and just ask. I'll say draw this again if needed. And maybe I can say that from decreasing perspective. Is it so it's I'll assume then it's okay with everyone. Yes, just just take a minute. Yeah, there's no need to rush. This counter examples is what builds the intuition, I say suppose I, I think not. Okay. All right. Then let's move on. Yeah. So now let us actually prove. So now let's remove all these things. Let's actually only keep the statement and let's try to prove. So if someone has done the proof, they can present it. We can all, you know, listen and uh, fill in the details if needed, or say it in different ways if needed. Otherwise, I will say um, we'll try to do. I, yeah, let's see.
And this question you will find in any combinatorics book you open, you will find this question. Okay, in maybe general principle chapter, if it's a if it's an elementary book. That's why I'm not. That's why the proof comes in the end. The proof is not the most important thing here. So no one has, no one knows this. So suppose some people have done more Olympiad maths, maybe have would have encountered this if they have. Okay, okay. So let's yeah. So again, how should we yeah? How should we start this kind of thing? So once again, as I said the last time, in this kind of either or theorems. You know, so this is an either or theorem, right? There are two possibilities, either an increasing or a decreasing. Uh, yeah. So to get us started, to have something to work, and it's embedded in the very nature of the kind of statement, right? One opposing forces. We assume that one of them is not true. So assume that there is no there is no increasing subsequence. of length n plus one. Okay, so assume basically that, let me just let's write it in a different way. Yeah, all increasing subsequences, subsequences have lengths less than, okay, less than. Less than let's say less than equal to n. So, so now what? How do we find a decreasing subsequence? Now, the decreasing subsequence comes from the peaks. Mm -hmm. If you have peaks, no, why will the thing in between be decay? Okay, okay, yes, okay, yeah, that's right. Yes, because we are assuming that, um, right, yeah. I proved it for n. So you want to, no, you want to use in, so you want to use a smaller case. Yes, 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 that's right, that's right. Oh no, but you have to say more details, otherwise it's not, otherwise it's a sneaky, right? And it may not be correct.
So you see, so here is a slight trick. So that's what I don't like about this proof. This is we are doing a proof by pigeonhole principle. And so there's a trick here, which is a little, yeah, but it's a trick that's used all the place. There are other proofs that I will do by formalizing the idea of that, what I was saying about the length uh, decreases and the breadth has to increase and so on. That just makes it like water, very, very clear. But, but we don't have the language yet. And we can't jump to that to the elementary proof first. So yeah, so, so the possible lens. So what we will, the basic construction is that, uh, but what do we want to do? So we want to take the largest, yeah. So uh, let, um yeah okay now how do i write that so that's simple okay let 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 uh let s1 be the longest increasing subsequence starting maybe we'll have to take ending i think this will not work but let's try this because yeah, starting uh, with one, okay? So you want to take the longest possible increasing subsequence that starts from the first term, starts with X1, I should say, okay? So our sequence is X1, X2 and so on, okay? Starts with X1. And similarly, XI, uh, SI, this is sequence, okay? This is the longest possible increasing subsequence that starts at XI. So naturally, right, I'm trying to, make as big a thing as possible. So I'm trying to take that, okay, starting with two, what is the longest uh, longest possible subsequence that I can take? Okay, so is it clear what this is? It is a sequence, SI, so SI is a sequence, it's the longest starts with XI. For X1, you will get longest sequence that starts with one, so X1 for, sorry, I mean S1. For S2, you get the longest subsequence start with S, X2. Those will all potentially be different, obviously. Okay. Yeah, so how many sequences do we have? So we have, how many sequences do we have? We have N square plus one sequences. Right. And what are the possible lengths? The lengths are one, two, till n. The length is not more than n. They have already assumed. Yeah. We have already assumed that the length cannot be more than n. Okay. Uh, One minute. Yeah, it's one minute. Huh? Just let me think. If I would have taken longer sequence that's ending in those places, then I would have taken the length. Okay, no, it's not. It's not like that. But one minute. So if I take. Um, okay, anyways, yeah, let's, yeah, so let's continue with this, yeah. So you see, the, the key idea is this, which is really cool thing, that these n square plus one sequences are there, probably all these ideas are similar, n square plus one sequences, and the possible lengths are from one to n, right? So this means that, so how many sequences are there? There are n square plus one sequences, and how many lengths are there? So let me make this, so let me make a box for length one and I'm making a box for length two. And in the length two box, I'll put all the sequences of length two and so on. So I mean, all the sequences among these SIs, of course, okay. In length three box and I have, a, so I only have N boxes, only N boxes, but I have N square plus one different sequences, right? So obviously at least one, 
length or at least one box must include at least n plus one items. Is that good with everyone? Yeah, at least one box will have n plus one, at least n plus one, at least, at least n plus one uh, subsequences. So there will be one length. Now I do not know what that length is. That is the whole point of this, right? It's a very, in some sense, this looks very existential. It is. Right? So maybe that length is three. Yeah. That there are n square, there are n plus one sequence sub increasing subsequences of length three. So it could be this one length three, another length three, another length three, another length, like this. Do you guys get it? Yes, yes. At least one? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, this is a tricky, this is a tricky, probably the most tricky step, but this is very important. So, yeah. So first of all, you, first of all, let me just, let's back up a little bit, okay? In the sense, let's also repeat this part, this construction, what we are doing here. Yeah. So we are looking, it's, it's a very natural thing to do in some sense, right? You're looking for, we are looking for long increasing subsequences or long degree in subsequence, right? So I'm just trying my best in the sense that I'm saying, okay, starting with X1, so there's one, so there's X1, starting with X1, what is the longest subsequence? I'm not saying I have to take X1, X2, X3, no, just the longest subsequence, obviously, right? What is the longest subsequence increasing subsequence I can take starting with X1, that will be my S1. Okay, that's the sequence, that is the sequence on its own. Similarly, you have S2, S3 and so on. So I'm just trying my best, just trying to take the longest one. Okay, now we have assumed that none of them have length N, sorry, none of them have length more than N, right? So they have N square plus one sequences, okay? Each of these sequences is my best attempt to get the longest increasing subsequence starting with particular point, okay, i, different i's. But the lengths are only from one to n, right? So you have n square plus one items or n square plus one pigeons and n pigeonholes, n cages. You have this many cages. So at least one cage must have at least n plus one pigeons. Right, because if each of them has n, at most n pigeons then totally there'll be n, n square pigeons. But we have n square plus one pigeons. Okay. I mean, this was one way to see it. We'll, this will be formulated better later on, averaging and so on. Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah. But the only thing is that the way this is read, the, 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 the cages are very, is a, <laughs> is a unique kind of thing, right? The cages are the lengths, okay? And here you have n square plus one different sequences. So there will be at least one cage, which will have at least n plus one pigeons. And each of these n plus one subsequences or each of these n plus one pigeons will have the same height, will have the same length. So say this is, say this is box, some box, let's say box three, doesn't matter. So you have found so you have found one length such that there are n plus one subsequences of that length of a particular length. That is the most important thing. Will not that is the way this works here. Okay, if we, we it's not about getting long and long sequence sequences now because we have already abandoned the approach of getting n plus one length increasing subsequence. It's about getting 
right? It, it's about getting this. Um, so of particular length, yeah. It's about getting n plus one subsequences of a particular length. Okay. Now, what do you think you should do? Now, as Raghav has been saying, has said many times, this is now will come in the peaks. I think so, right? Because now you see, let us, let us, so there are many sequences, there are n plus one sequences, n plus one sequences of length three. Okay. So you take the peaks of those sequences, they will form a decreasing subsequence. Okay. That is what should will happen. Let us see why. So, yeah, let's say length three only, okay? N plus one subsequences of length three. Let's, again, cut it out. Go back up. And this is a two dimensional version. There are higher dimensional versions of this, but the proofs are very similar. So this idea, lies in the two dimensional version only. Okay, so let's say, say, I mean, now let me before that, let me show it to a diagram, what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say that you have n plus one sequences of length three, increase of sequence of length three. So you have one subsequence of length three like this. Okay, that starts at, I don't know, let's say it starts at two. Okay, so let's say we have S2 in this. And then there is another one which starts at somewhere here. Can there be an increasing subsequence that starts from here? Somewhere in between these two terms. No, 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 that's right. But I'm asking a different question. I'm asking that, so let's say that in these, among these n plus one subsequences, there is one subsequence that starts from two of length three. Okay. So there is one subsequence that starts from two. Let's say it is, uh, it uses the term two, then it uses the term, I don't know, 100, then it uses the term 110. Okay. Now, can I have and can I have another, can I have S105? Starting from 105, can I have a, can I have, can I have this? That is my question. Starting from 105, if I have a subsequence that is starting from 105, So you're saying it has to be below 100. So the entire thing has to be below 100, you're saying. Yes. Yeah, that is, that is the point, yes. Uh, but how do you put it more? Mm, so you basically, if you just draw this freely first, if you draw, let's say like this, this will not work. Yeah, the end point of the second subsequence, yeah, the end point of the second subsequence of S of 105, this end point cannot be bigger than the end point of the first subsequence, S2. Cannot be, otherwise, otherwise you will get a longer sequence starting from two. But we have assumed that this length three is the longest subsequence that starts from two. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you have to be below two. Why below two? Why not?
no 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 it will not start like that no this could be so let's say let's say s of 105 so yeah let's do this very clearly let's keep this black first one and let's make let's make as this this one blue So if you start with this blue one, now see the blue one can start from below this, can start from below S2, but then it can go, it can go like this. What's wrong with that? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's right, that's right, that's right. So S of one zero, and that is it. So what you have said probably has given us the answer. S of one zero five or the starting term, right? The starting term of this has to be less than the starting term here. That's it, right? The starting term of the second subsequence has to be less. And that's already what I have said, right? If this starting term was bigger itself, if this blue dot was bigger than, so it doesn't have to be bigger than anything, but just bigger than S2. But then then you'll, then already, then this blue dot has to be higher, then this has to be higher. But then you get a length four, you cannot avoid. I mean, he can forget, S2 can forget the those two black dots now, he can leave them. You have this four length. Do you guys see this? Yeah, the starting of the first, so there are n plus one subsequences, right? We take the starting positions. Okay, so you have this, you take the starting positions. Take their starting positions. Yeah, this was very simple. I, I was, why, the way I was saying, they will become, wait, will that also work? This will work, but just give me one, one second. The end point. Take the end point. No, so what I was saying would have not worked. Sorry. What Raghav is saying is perfectly correct. Yeah. Take the starting positions. Okay. Let's take the starting positions. Okay. And uh, yeah, this will form a degree in subsequence. Subsequence. Just look at this S2 and S105, and then there are many more. Yeah, there are many more, right? They will be as something else, something else, till n plus one such SS. Okay, but the starting positions have to be decreasing because if the starting position, so if just write it, you will see it starting position of S105 is bigger than starting position. So this is not, this is abuse of notation, okay. My point is that if it's bigger than the starting position of S2, basically I'm saying that if X105 is bigger than X2, then you're doomed because then you can extend the sequence from X2. So from X2, you can take X105 and then you can take ISCA three length sequence, right? And then you get a bigger one. Okay, so you can attach and make a bigger one, but that's a contradiction that you have assumed that these are the biggest. That's why making the best attempt there, it's kind of a greedy approach, I just take the biggest, but here, word greedy is not precise because it's not an algorithm by any means, but yeah, it's an idea, it's things more like an extremal idea. So this is, this is what I will say. Now, just think if this makes sense. Starting positions is, is what should be taken. Yeah. Otherwise, I think one can also do it with ending positions, but then so if you have taken the longest of sequence ending at one, ending at two, and so on, then you would have to take the ending positions. Yeah. Right? Then the ending positions. Uh, yeah, then you have to order the ending positions and they will form decreasing if you take the ending positions from left to right. Yeah, but that's, so there's a lot of flexibility in the proof. Okay, it's not, but it is the most natural one. 
So is it okay with everyone? Okay, it is. So then, then let's stop today, okay? So I only plan to do a one hour class today. So the, the, the real thing we will see the next day, okay? And this looks very complicated, right? And it is a little, because we're trying to do it in an elementary way. So it's not very complicated, but it's very new and it's a very, it's a kind of looks like a new idea, okay? But it's a new idea, it's not a new idea. We'll see this in terms of, once we have the right language, then you can just see this in terms of length and breadth. So out of the sequence, I'll create some dots with area and square, and then you can see from there, okay? But then for that, we have to build, invest in the theory, but then that theory pays off very well. It's very, we'll see some number theory applications and so on from there, okay? So I think I'll stop here. Again, just have a look, see if you have any problems. Also, some of you send me some problems. I will look at them during your time. I look at it and say, okay. So then if it is good, then we will end. Mm-hmm.